let's talk about the game now uh super entertaining game this was like started out also pretty um strong by united i mean did you think like in the start only that like this is the this is the day then you're going to be like i think it's brighton the first 10 matches 10 minutes is and after that after 10 minutes also is when we settled and we sh- really should have put the game to bed in the first half man those chances that profligacy that we had all of that is just kind of I think it's a carbon copy of the FA Cup game. So we were up and again we were started slow. Man United scored. We came back two one. We had a four on two or five on two chance in second half. All of those chances we didn't finish them, and again it costed us again. The same thing with Manu goal. The Manu goal was very similar com- like the Antonio's goal. Right? I mean he was able to turn, take a shot. It's just I mean I can totally excuse Kwanza for that chance. because obviously youngster i mean he has kind of you know those mistakes happen you know when you're growing up and all of that but but the fact that we didn't take our chances that kind of killed us honestly yeah, and towards the end yeah. of the half i was just hoping that united just hang on and it remains 1-0 because i think that's where we would have lost the game completely if like liverpool got one more and like they did have the momentum at the end so at at the end of the first half so it was very crucial that we went through at a 1-0 and then Mm. could sort of mm-hmm. even try for a comeback mm. and like that one mistake from Kwanza like gave us a foot in the door and then obviously Manu was like what a legend man already so i'm just going <laughs> to keep pawning over him but yeah 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 no like super strike bro star boy but uh, that that's what like i was just telling said in the game that like i feel like ten hag today just um you know polarized the group and like motivated them made them like fully angry and all that didn't give them any tactics and send them to the field just like that so they were like fully you know mongolic like in the first 15 minutes they were going nuts they were angry but um uh, they were pulled were like breaking them down quite easily they were a little more patient uh and they should have finished three four chances at least and that basically came yeah. back to bite them uh yeah I think the Salah chance was more. It was more obvious and glaring. I mean, the fact I don't know, man. It's been so off in the last two games. Even the Brighton game also, he just could score that one goal. Apart from that, he was very off. Uh, mm-hmm. This he was subbed off in the Sheffield match. This match, so many chances. You could have taken a shot. At least test the keeper, right? If you cannot get the shot, if you, you, know, you can't be blazing over fifty yards from the goal. I mean, just five yards from the goal can't be blazing over. The Salah chance has kind of costed us. Like Liverpool had fifteen shots in the first half, United had zero. Like that's how different the first half was from the second yeah. half. Ultimately, at the end of the day, on target target shots were six for Liverpool and five for United. Yeah. So didn't really matter by the end of it, right? Sure, I mean United aren't very good, like per se. But <laughs> in a season, if you're knocking out Liverpool from the FA Cup and you know uh, being a title. Uh, whatever party poopers, that is something. Something is there, right? Nehal, yeah, like yeah. You, you feel something. Yeah. Finally, Do, feeling something. There is a pulse. We, There's a pulse. I keep. I'm, I'm convinced that like uh, that day, like they had too much luck, bro. That seven zero day, all their goals <laughs> came on that day, and then after that, they're just like breaking the duck. Because today, there were two instances in second half where. any other day i would i would have seen these players bury those chances i think one was sala where he was in near post and he just skied it mm. and the other one was luis diaz and i i i agree the ball was a bit hard it was bouncing but i see i i, I saw diaz 9 out of 10 times he would have cleared it so it was just like very unlucky and i completely agree with abhinav because i thought that the game was exactly like the fa cup which was weird because like why didn't how did they how were they not prepared for this like they knew that uh, united were just like waiting for that one chance and i think they built on that momentum from the first goal and mm-hmm. second goal was also it's like a very low xg goal bro it was yeah. not like a high chance yeah. so it was like a very good quality uh, goal um, but at the end of the day i also feel like the with maguire in the back i f- i feel a lot more confident than any other mm. defenders because i feel like he's good in the air he might he may be like, he might he may not be like completely mobile but like he's not the worst defender in the current crop four and uh, uh, he was he was instrumental in the fa cup win he was instrumental today too and i think uh, we just have uh, club's number don't you think abhinav yep we'll never know we'll never know again like we'll Bye. never know 
Okay, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, if you're going in analysis based on results, yes, I, I totally agree with that. Again, there are two kinds of things, right? I mean, if you're based on the football or based on results and all that, but yes, it does seem very awkward for Klopp to not win, especially I mean, the FA Cup probably he would have been okay with losing that, but at least this match, lose, you know, kind of dropping points from the position where we were in the first half. And I think it, it all kind of comes down to the fact that we've played the youngsters too much. And we kind of sucked out every last bit of energy from them in the over this period. And I think at some point, you, you really cannot expect to be defensively solid with a backline of Kelleher, Bradley, and Kwanzaa over and over and over and over. At some point, someone will make a mistake because those mm-hmm. guys they did the, they had the game of their lives against City. They were solid enough against the, the games after. But at some point, something's gonna give. And I think that was that's what happened even in the FA Cup final, even now. And I cannot wait for Trent and Konate and Allison to come back. I cannot. Just just this week and then they're back. I'm just, thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm, <laughs> this is fine. I think I think being one point behind uh, on or actually behind on goal defense, right? Or, or one goal point defense, behind. Yeah. yeah. No, we'll, we'll talk about uh, the implications. Uh, let's yeah, let's yeah, keep yeah. the game for the next couple of minutes. Uh, exactly. What, what did you think about the the penalty. Let, let me talk to Sid. I think he feels more strongly about it. What do you think about Van Visaka's penalty? Bro, like, I think you were discussing this also earlier, but if that was not given as a pen by Anthony Taylor, then it wouldn't have been, like, given a pen by VAR. Wait, did it, it drop off or something? Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah, saying, like, ahead. we discussed this earlier as well, but, um, like, if that was not given as a pen by Anthony Taylor in the game, it would not have been given as a pen by VAR also. It was like one of those calls and like Van Bissaka did not touch the ball, sure. He also did not trip uh, Curtis uh, Javi Elliott immediately. Mm-hmm. But his trailing leg did catch him. But I also feel like Elliott was going for the trip. He was going for the penalty. So yeah, I mean, it's a tough one. I don't think it was a penalty to be very honest. But I guess it was given and that's how it is. So. Nihal, do you think this is like uh, uh, basically not like discipline issue or something? Like, two games we've seen, United just concede these absolutely stupid penalties which have nothing to do with the game and how they're yeah. playing. Yeah, completely like swings the whole momentum. Yeah. Right? Like, and yeah. I would, I'd argue three games because even Brentford, Bisaka played uh, Tony onside. It was the only one who was like yards away from the back line. It's lapse in concentration. Yeah. Yeah. And today also, I would chalk it down to laps in concentration. And Chelsea was fucking horrible. Like, hmm. thank God today we got at least salvaged a point because yeah. otherwise the focus would have been there. Hmm. But uh, absolute shit show. And I think I'm done with the manager. I think these are these 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 sort of things come down to coaching. Yes, there is an aspect of like individual errors, uh, and I get it. Like, if the players like Bisaka is probably not the best, uh, you know, apple in the tree, like at United, but you have to like organize your team uh, defense and all of those things come down to coaching. And I think it, it's a big miss. And thank God the results are going this way because I think it'll make the decision for the board very easy. Like, I think we'll have another Dutch manager potentially might or might not win silverware, but he'll definitely be sacked after the FA Cup. Like no matter what happens. This is it. I, it's, it's not, I can't blame the players as much as I can blame the coach here because... It, you need to, when you're leading 2-1 up at like 85-86 minutes, there are certain things that you have to instill into your players to close those games out and not make shitty mistakes like this. But, but Van Bissaka have... has always been this way, right? I mean, he's been instinctive, he's been aggressive, he's tackling. I think the one, that's the one thing he always does, he's tackling. I mean, he's going forward and his general fullback play is not as great as his tackling and defense and all that. And I've, and I've seen him make these mistakes Time and time and again. It's, it's not an Eric Ten Hag problem per se. I mean, yeah, there is some part to it. But I don't think it's him all... It's Van Bissaka more yeah. and Ten Hag less is what I feel. It's always I mean, some player or the other who's making a mistake in every game and that's costing us like points. Sometimes you end. have to go back to the to the coaching and to the manager to see like why the discipline... Like discipline is an issue which has to be coached, right? It, yeah. Persistent, like when you when you're defending, you have to be calm, you have to be patient. All of these things come from coaching, and I think if the coach itself hasn't given you those instructions, then you make these rash decisions. Also about consequences, like sometimes some coaches have this aura that you make these mistakes and you feel so shit scared going back into the dressing room. I yeah. was telling Sid the other day, I don't think. Uh, 
Ten Hag has that. I don't think Ten Hag has that aura, like where people are like scared of him that way. Um, yeah. We were just seeing. Him, um, head, right? I don't know if you guys have seen uh, uh, the Together documentary City's uh, Netflix documentary, which came out, mm-hmm. The Treble. Uh, basically, uh, it's uh, their la- their se- last season. Pep Guardiola is is a mental case, bro. Like he's uh, he's he's crack literally like the way he manages his team um he's he's literally psychologically in the head i don't think ten hag is able to do that um, and today also we saw a lot of like uh, like differences between how they were defending and attacking there were a lot of moments where they were good but there were also a lot of moments where i was just like i don't know what tactics these are there weren't any tactics bro and then just uh, abhi now I, i get it like there could be two things right like bisaka mm-hmm. could be bad and also ten hag coaching like those two things can independent coexist mm-hmm. right and it's not just this game like throughout the season it has been shaky like okay. throughout the season, we didn't have van bisaka we've conceded i was just going back to wamsi's like stats that he pulled up and how many goals we conceded mm-hmm. like two goals in four minutes versus bayern like two goals in two minutes like this is unheard of at a top club where you concede two goals in like such quick succession or like fail to close out games and the number of like points that we lost i'm sure like we are right up there and uh, i think to 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 nirav's point ten hag is not that big of a personality or he hasn't like won the players enough over that they trust him completely i think there is some issue there and then the other piece uh, the other piece that i'm absolutely like uh, agree with uh, nirav is that uh, he is not an arteta or uh, pep guardiola he's like tactically also not that strong so that's why i think the players are not bought in like if you're good players will buy in dude like it's mm-hmm. not not rocket science i think like your tactics have to be good yes man management is a play but genius yeah. jumps out and i don't think he is one so no, i think that's... it's two things right i think you either have to have the aura like pep or klopp or any of the managers of that caliber who have proved themselves or you have to be tactically good like arteta or any of the new managers who are coming in if i think ten hag is neither i think that's where that's what puts him in that difficult spot with the players like these these many level of individual mistakes and these calamities should not happen on this level for a club like united and i think that's basically what's you know screwing them up But do you think Ten Hag is not telling his players to like be more focused when they're leading and not throw away games? It's, it's, it's absolutely... very simple. Yeah, he would. Absolutely... Yeah, it's very simple. Yeah. Yeah, but they. I mean, not not listen, listen. But it, it's just that they do not have that. Okay, if if I screw this up, some you know, I will not be starting the next match. I mean, they, there is nothing of sure. that intimidation there. Right? But that's also because we don't have the squad depth to like. fucking bench players when we need to right to mm-hmm. prove a point and i am not questioning the intent of either the manager or the players to like not throw away games i am i'm pretty sure nobody wants to lose the game like they did at chelsea right but and and it's very simple for like any manager to like not tell instruct his players to like keep the ball keep your heads don't lose it and then like just mm-hmm. see the see the game through right but even then like we are seeing repeated patterns where the same players are like losing the plot every single time and giving away points that we are already have in the back so i would also put the blame equally on the players like yes maybe tenhag does not have the aura true but he also has his hands cupped a lot of the times because he can't prove a point by putting a player on the bench when he doesn't have the squad mm-hmm. um i d- disagree with that honestly mm-hmm. i think like uh, it, it doesn't matter about squad depth is fine like it it only matters when you have a style of play and when even the shittier players or whatever you have they're trying to implement something you can't just like um, you know play the sort of football which is which is only good against big teams or something like that or like specific teams you have to imply your personality and your own philosophy onto the team regardless of who the personnel is Uh, mm. Just like maybe like Ange Postecoglou is a good example. Barely had anyone like uh, any proper, you know, starting eleven this year, but still kept on playing the way he is, and they're like eight points better than United now. Uh, it's not even about points. They have a clear philosophy. They know how they're going to play. They have a lot of difficulties which they're going to face, defensive, uh, 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 you know, problems. But still, they have a philosophy. They're going to play that. 
I think United has had a good team today. I, I don't think there was any reason for him to, you know, uh, any reason for Ten Hag not to play the way he wants to play. I think this philosophy discussion about the United way and all that is a very vague discussion. I don't understand it. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I wanted the, to hear Nihal's thoughts. Like, you, you, do you think um, this philosophy discussion that like Ten Hag doesn't have the players right now, he has to play transitional football? This does this matter, or should he just start the process already? Like, what's the what's the hurt? What's the way? I mean, the style of play should have been visible for all of us to see. Like, mm. There is. It's so erratic that, like, you, you, dude, I bet that 85 to 90 percent of United fans do not know, including myself, like, what are kind of players, like, what United will, which kind of United will show up for a particular game. It's mm-hmm. a roll of dice for us, right? And two years into your management career, irrespective of injuries, irrespective of lack of personnel, it should not be the case. True. Like you need to know. Like, if you're Jose Mourinho, you know how Jose Mourinho's teams go in. Mm-hmm. If you're Kurgan Club, you know how Club's teams go in. Yeah. Like, you know, there is... A, and Pep has been consistent. He's been evolving. But, you know, he has a signature as well. Right? There isn't one, like, clearly. Like, no one knows. It's a roll of dice. So, clearly, it's just that he's putting a, 11 people out there and some day, sometimes they're clicking and sometimes they're not. Yeah. Right? So, I think that is BS. And... You and example is perfect, dude. Like he did not have any of his like he had so many injuries throughout the season, but they are highly entertaining every game. Doesn't matter like how they play, it's just like full metal football. Like sorry, wrong use of the word. <laughs> Up now I couldn't think of anything else. But high octane, like you know what kind of Spurs show up to every game? Like, it's an entertaining game. Like, that that should have been the case by now for Ten Hag, right? Like, we saw that with Arsenal in the second season as well. Like, Arteta in his first, uh, in his second season, you knew, you knew what kind of Arsenal would come and play. Like, they went to City, they played, they had a really good game at City, right? Uh, and then every, we all knew that, like, next season they were going to get better. Similarly to with Klopp also, like, first season he failed with in Europa Finals and everything. But in the second season, he, you know, st- stepped up, owned into it. Like, actually, I think they were the only team to beat City that season, I think. To break their invincible, like, run. Yeah, run. Yeah, so, oh, so, there was clear identity for great teams and great managers. And Eric Ten Hag just has been hiding behind injuries and, like, players and everything. So, yeah. yeah. Um, I read an article in The Athletic yesterday that apparently Ten Hag is going to stay. Like, this is coming from Laurie Whitwell. And he's saying that um, in yours think that sacking the manager right now is probably going to be too much change in a season that they've already, like, overhauled the rest of the staff above Ten Hag. And apparently Ten Hag is on board to work as head coach. Which is what? against... <laughs> What's which is team? against what... Potato, Sorry, potato, what? bro. Potato, What's potato. So, th- the thing is, uh, like, when he had first signed on for United, uh, he had a certain amount of, like, in his contract, he had said that I want a certain amount of say in how we approach players, what kind of our philosophy is this, that. And now, basically, the power will reside with people like Dan Ashworth, people like Umar Barada and, like, Jason Wilcox, right? And he is sort of going to be a tool used by these three people to implement the football that they vision envision. I guess. That's what he's saying. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, like, neither of these three are right now on the team. They're not actively working at United. And these three are should be the people who have to decide the next manager at United because they have to essentially work with them, right? So I don't see Ten Hag getting sacked immediately at the end of the season, no matter what happens, because of this only reason that the new manager has, has to be appointed by these three folks and not by any any random person like it has been done so far. I mean, I guess that's fair. And only time is going to tell if that's a good decision or not because there are a lot of good managers right now. We don't know yeah. what the thing will play will be next year. But also, big teams are also looking for managers this year. So it could probably be a good idea to wait for another year. Um, but yeah, uh, going from... Uh, sad United discussion to actually some some silver lining in United season is the young boys which have come in. Um, Nihal, describe your feeling towards Kobe Manu, bro. I know you've been repping this boy since since mm-hmm. a long time. I mean, dude, like gro- growing up, like your favorite midfielders are uh, you know Zavi, 
you know iniesta like you know paul scholes was good but like he was never like you, you know they had that aura sort of thing and i've never seen i've never thought like united could develop a player with those kind of attributes mm-hmm. like who is very silky who plays with his head up and not head down like you know he always knows uh he's he's very confident about his like ball at his feet like he doesn't get scared press resistant these are the things that we've never seen like from an england yeah. midfielder and an english player and it's 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 nice bro like it's it's a very like uh, good thing that we don't have to invest heavily in like bringing those kind of players like you know we know for a fact that like he is going to develop because the rate at which and nirav we saw him live bro in the stadium he was fucking world class that day even though he was friendly he was mm. actually really really yeah. good he got our eye like he was just and he got injured too <laughs> and then he got injured next game but yeah. like you know we walked out of that game thinking that fuck that that kid is good right so like it's i and for an 18 year old to come in and like play that way and keep growing and uh, play three liverpool f- fixtures and come out of all the three of them like with something in each of them is fucking is fucking amazing and i i wish he stays injury free and like continues his progress i don't i'm touching all wood so that i don't jinx this <laughs> sid has more like elated feelings so go ahead sid and we'll ask abhinav just... if he's hyper like just no, nothing but later <laughs> you can see the smile on my face this this doesn't happen when like in the last few years watching united and kobe mainu oh my god what a guy and just just think about it right like the last few weeks for him uh, that winner against wolves he's sort of like grown in popularity and like exponentially he played in that game against liverpool in the fa cup uh, he got called for england he came on from the bench and won he started the next game like rising through the ranks like at an insane pace and through all of this like a lot of players tend to lose their heads and like the, the this level of meteoric rise sort of gets to them and it can impact their progress it can impact how they approach a game in 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 their own heads and i don't see that happening with menu which is why i'm even more excited because yes all the attributes like he's so smooth on the ball he's like so good to like just watch as a fan and just like his attitude i think is his biggest strength so i just hope he continues like this in the next season and yeah like hopefully we won't have another pop guy so like he doesn't yeah. seem like a pop guy yeah. anyway uh, yeah exactly he seems like from the same mold as you know like the nice boys yeah nice boys the nice boys at city right yeah <laughs> yeah the nice boys at city we also noticed this thing with the documentary that city have all nice boys bro like all of them are nice like you know family men this nice people Pep is like so Kyle Walker probably. Like this Kyle Walker. And, <laughs> and, and then this Bernardo Silva. And then this Grealish. Very nice guy. He, he beats with Liverpool, but then who doesn't? Uh, but uh, yeah. yeah, Kobe Manu, dude. Like what a goal like to score at Old Trafford against your rivals. Turn around. What a shot. Unexpected out of nowhere. We have a crazy reaction for that too. All three of us. Up and up, how did you feel at that moment? What do you feel generally about this player? I think that goal, I was that I was imagining the worst possible. I mean, I was I had kind of given up on title at that point. I'm like, if we lose, I mean, it's not about losing one more point because at that time we were drawing. But if we lose to United at this stage of the fixture list, I thought that's going to kind of suck all the air out of us. But hopefully, we drew. But the larger point being Kobe Mainu, I think. if i remember correctly the imp- he's having the kind of impact which rashford has had in his first season i remember that match rashford had against arsenal i believe mm, yeah. 2016 2017 season uh, van gaal was the yeah. coach he was oh, brought yeah. in two goals or something two header, right two in front of something i remember that match very vividly yeah that remember that match very vividly when we talk to hoopers bro united <laughs> that that season they took the title that away is, from that us. That has been our MO like the last ten years, bro. That's yeah. all we do. Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah, know, I think that that match was when I think we were playing the Carabao Cup final against City or something. Klopp's first season, whatever. So I was watching that match earlier, waiting for Liverpool match. Rashford, dude, I think came out of nowhere wearing that thirty-nine jersey, whatever, and it was like amazing. The impact he had on that season, it's it's too good. And I think I, I haven't heard of of Kamenu till I think he scored that winner, the three-four winner or something this season against I don't know who. Was, um, 
world strike last minute yeah. winner till that point i had no idea who this guy was i mean i, I i've seen him in the team sheet against liverpool at anfield i guess but i'm like okay yeah probably one youngster right and from that point on i started noticing such a talent man even today I mean, you forget about the goal right i think there were a couple of tackles where he was kind of stopping the attacks and starting the stopping liverpool attacks starting them he was all over the pitch the best part is for a guy that age what youngsters usually do is they hide they try to kind of be behind the players more experienced mm-hmm. players like casemiro or who or bruno whoever and then they hide and they play the safe pass he doesn't do that he takes it on he gives it and i think that's where i mean begrudgingly i have to accept i mean i mean he's amazing right i mean rashford was amazing when he when he broke in i think he has similar traits and hopefully he doesn't do too well going forward but i'm happy for him <laughs> Yeah. yeah um going from kobe manu even uh, your boy kamba wala had a good game it was good good yeah good. yeah, yeah. So like for, i remember uh, him one tackle that he did on nunez like yeah. coming from behind recovering the ball that was like a good instance to probably yeah. show so what kind of so 100% ground is. duels one 100% tackles one 29 passes completed three clearances and two interception for his I think this is his first professional game, or uh, has he played before? First start. First start. Yeah, but mm-hmm. his first start against Liverpool. That's a that's a pretty big thing. Do you think he has uh, similar traits to Kobe? Do you think he can come up the same way? It's. Um, I think it's too early because we've seen him in a game where like we faced wave after wave after attacks, and there were a lot of defensive actions. Mm-hmm. And I think modern day Premier League centre back, you need to be good at your feet too. Mm-hmm. right we haven't seen much of that but for everything that you mentioned i think it's commendable that like you start your first game at liverpool and come out of it not being like on the wrong side which i think is fucking awesome and i just hope that he's fucking 65 bro he's built he's mm-hmm. a strong french kid like 18 19 year old so like i i think it's it's good it's let's see uh right now we because both of our other cent all of our all of our other center back options are injured not just both i think we have four four center backs on the sidelines yeah. so uh he will close out the season and i think it's interesting time because i actually for there are, there's been one bright spot this season for me personally i don't know if people have noticed but that is maguire i just love his like re- recovery arc because dude that that poor guy has been through hell and back bro last season Like yeah. he was, Everything. if I was, if I would have been in like a therapy office forever. Like it was just rough, and um, I'm I'm glad that like he'll get his chance to like close out the season. And Kamwala also, we'll we'll see, dude. Next game is again. Being a United fan is like watching a crime series documentary, bro. We have Bournemouth coming up. See what happens there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, true. But uh, in a season where so much shit has gone through and like so much. Uh, bad has happened. You're at least coming out of like a good core of like young yeah. players with uh, Garnacho, uh, Hoyland, you know, I like Dalo, uh, Mano, Mano. Kamwala, and who else? I like Dalo. Dalo is twenty-three. Dalo is good. Yeah, yeah, pretty good. And uh, yeah. I think credit where it's due. One thing I like about Ten Hag is just like that fact that uh, Abhinav mentioned, like where. he let he doesn't actually doesn't care like if they're good enough they'll he'll actually encourage them to show up mm-hmm. and even garnacho right like their amount of risks he takes i think mm-hmm. the co- coaching like i think eric ten hag is encouraging to them to take risks because he identifies something in them uh, it's just sad that none of these players were bought in by him they were just like academy <laughs> daddy was also good then like you know we would have had a separate discussion but let's not uh, get there but it's it's a bright spark bro core is good I feel like if we have a good manager, we will move from party pooping FC to partying FC. So mm. <laughs> the partying FC finally in a title race. But yeah, uh, um, yeah, even I agree. Like with a good manager, maybe things can uh, change. But uh, yeah, going away from United Liverpool, let's talk about uh, the title race. Abhinav, what do you think, bro? has this has this uh, party pooping fc dented hopes are you are you feeling the pressure now I, we definitely wouldn't have won the title if united won this match but the fact that they didn't it's not about one point or two points right i mean it's about the mentality and it's about the effect that you'll have because the fa cup 
loss as bad it was it came at a good time for us with the international break where we were able to recoup and all that but if that kind of loss had happened today mentally it would have kind of sucked the life out of us uh, you know the next 3 4 5 weeks but i think again see if you look at the points i'm like i don't know we are 71 points one on go tied on goal difference in first place and then one point ahead and we still have like what seven games to go I, there is no way i'm going to give up on title at this point but it's highly highly challenging i don't know man city they'll they'll win the next seven games dude there is no way city is going to even drop one single point the one point at least was the uh, yesterday against brighton uh, or was it brighton yesterday city no or, it was brighton uh, arsenal arsenal okay arsenal well, the, yeah, it was villa it, it was villa yes i guess i don't know or i don't know which of team that was but yeah but so many things are on your mind yeah i know i mean i've been looking at this fixture list like for the last two months i've been thinking okay february is done march is done april is almost done but i don't know man i think at this point i would give us like maybe a 30% chance of winning the title city are still favorites arsenal i don't know man how arsenal is so good like defensively midfield even attack even havers and i mean i haven't been concentrating on arsenal enough to be honest it's it's basically all the the city trauma for the last 4 or 5 years i guess but yeah we'll see It's worse, right, to have one more team just come in randomly oh, into the whole um, thing. Yeah, it kind of adds fun, but yeah, it it is worse. I mean, yesterday, I had no hopes of Arsenal. I mean, Brighton getting anything from Arsenal, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah but like Arsenal. both Arsenal and City have such taxing European fixtures, bro. Like yeah. Bayern and City. Okay. Like if the first leg doesn't go as planned, it could suck so much energy out of each of these teams. and uh, arsenal itself have like a very tough fixture list i see their fixture list and i'm like every week is like an adventure <laughs> and they have all the fan base players everyone <laughs> have to just like sit very nervously do all of that liverpool mm-hmm. have right so i think maximum points liverpool has the potential to get because atlanta who are we kidding like europa league is actually a blessing for you guys like how are you random- saying liverpool have good fixtures man they do not have good fixtures i've told you, you yesterday other teams, teams right uh, you look at city right you don't understand just the champions league itself is going to take so much uh, out yeah. of the team and it's not like we're not going to go for it you can easily not go for europa league it doesn't really matter although i feel like you should because if you lose the title klopp is going to be like this what empty handed towards the end <laughs> it won't feel good it won't you you just going to take he's going to take that carabao cup and like just have like <laughs> dude we will have a parade no matter what we will have even if klopp doesn't win anything we will have a parade klopp that's, that's a different award thing. for 2020 premier league title 2019 everything champion. yeah klopp's leaving we will just have a we'll party oh, like anything yeah. yeah that's fine i mean we don't that's care what others so think no that's just going to be so cringe no uh, doesn't make any sense because like it will finish his cabinet also like he'll just like yeah it's I mean, a he, be there to be one like the draw is yeah. very favorable it doesn't like you should go for it like yeah. it's not we are, I'll, i'll tell you what if someone tells me right now we will win europa league and then carabao cup and then premier league is whatever right if 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 someone gives me that right now i'm fine i'm okay obviously <laughs> yeah. what <laughs> europa league and carabao cup it doesn't mean uh, yeah. not premier league yeah not premier not premier league yeah europa league and carabao cup are fine I mean, I, I, I mean, it will be in Dublin. Everyone in Dublin is a Liverpool fan. We'll have a party out there. We'll have a parade. We'll be fine, and everything is good. But the fact, if I don't know, man, losing by one point or okay. less on goal difference. Let's do the thing. Let's do the thing. Uh, let's go one by one to try to see if, like, together, all of us can, uh, like, objectively see and see if in the run in who is actually gonna take cool. points uh, out of who. Okay, yeah. let's let's see Arsenal first. Okay, let's start with City. Okay. Let's, let's start, start with City. City. Let's, let's start, start with City. City. Yeah. Um, City next game Real Madrid, April ninth, April thirteenth. City have Luton Town. What do you guys think? They'll get it. City get will it? get Luton easily. Luton, yeah. yeah, no way, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah? Easy. Uh, what, what about you? But uh, everyone says plus three for City. Yeah, yeah, yeah plus three for City. Let me put plus three for City for Luton. Uh, hmm. Tottenham versus oh, so this is uh, uh, delayed. Fine. Then they have FA Cup April twentieth. Then Brighton uh, right after FA Cup away. Mm. Brighton away. Nihal. Hmm. Uh, three one zero. Th- this game is so, the high high likelihood of them dropping points because deserve yeah. is very. Like... What do you think? Three one zero. 
one one said one because you see right like they play madrid on 17th then they play chelsea in the fa cup on 20th mm. Mm. so it's like the players are going to be done yeah and then it's brighton brighton away is not easy like going to derby i think yeah. like that's where they can drop points so like one for city it'll be three but yeah okay one one okay i'm giving it as one okay sir yeah. then three days later nottingham forest away city nehal Three, three points. Three points. Three points. Yeah. No fucking way, man. Yeah. All right. We'll, we'll we can all agree that it's going to be three points. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Uh, Fulham away. At three, bro. It's, three. And West Ham at home also three. Yeah. Purse is between Fulham and bro, West Ham. Bro, no, no, no. Most likely. No, one sec, one sec. And I have a feeling have somewhere they'll Tottenham drop fixture. something here. Tottenham fixture. Then, no, no, Tottenham is right between sandwich between Fulham and West Ham. And that's uh, white, like Tottenham Hotspur Stadium away. I think mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. they will they will drop points there. Bro. Okay, one I, point. I have I have tickets for that match. I'm going Seven. to that Spurs City <laughs> match at Spurs huh? Stadium. Yeah. Hi. Are you going to the Spurs? I, mean, game? I, I I'll be in London that day. I'll be landing in London in the morning. I'm going Maybe. to that match. So Maybe. hopefully, I mean, my expectation was that we will win the title then. If City <laughs> drop points to Spurs, oh, wow. <laughs> but it's not oh, going I, to be the case. Wow. You don't get the Liverpool tickets, or what? Yeah, Liverpool tickets are two thousand bucks. I mean, there's no way I'm going to go there. Go to that. I mean, if I get something, I'll get something. But that was even this match was like three hundred bucks. Whatever. All right. Are we saying one point or zero points? Yeah. I think one. 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 Everyone one. 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 So basically, so four, four points. points. Drop. Only yeah. four points dropped by City. Yeah. Uh, okay. Let we'll calculate that. Arsenal. Let's go to Arsenal. Um, we have Bayern Munich at home, and then right after that, Arsenal at home. Nehal, what are we thinking? You get it. Aston Villa three points. What about you, uh, Abhinav? Aston Villa. I, I, my hope, hopes on Emery man, maybe one point there. Say Arsenal three point. Arsenal three. Arsenal three. I also say Arsenal three. So veto. We go for Arsenal three. Uh, okay. Then, then Bayern away Wednesday. Then Wolves away Saturday. What are we saying? Wolves is three points. Three points. Wolves yeah. three points. Three three three. No, no, Arsenal three points. Same three. Yeah, Arsenal. Um, then after that, Arsenal versus Chelsea three days later. Arsenal at home, Emirates. Dropping two points, bro. One dropping point, two yeah. points. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so much I I, I actually feel there's gonna be a drop point at Wolves. <laughs> Weirdly, no, but, but yeah. No, nah, we're not. We're not losing. It's not that team anymore, bro. Abina. Chelsea. Chelsea. I think you'll win. I think they yeah. they are they are also low key party pooper FC bro. So I yeah, I'm that's backing, I'm that's all these teams point. have le- remaining in the season bro. Just poop on other people. Dude, United have been party pooper FC for the past six seven years. They've kind of it's ingrained in them. Chelsea are just new kids on the block for party pooping. They they've not uh, they've not done the art enough yet. So they will they're not going to be that consistent in pooping. So it's fine. Dude, what are you saying? Uh, objectively, if you want to say Arsenal versus Chelsea at the Emirates, who's winning? What's the scene? Objectively, I would say three for Arsenal. Three, Nehal but I have one. a feeling like it's it's just unquantifiable. Like I don't know why. I just feel. No, but like if you had to like... put your money, I'd put my money on a draw. On a draw. Yeah. Uh, you Nehal also says draws. Me and Abhinav say three three. Mm-hmm. Right. Anyone so... want to change their prediction? Because Sid was on the fence. Let's give three because I think next game is one again. Okay. <laughs> three. Give it three. Then next game, five days later, why uh, Tottenham Hotspur Stadium versus Arsenal? Abhinav, zero, 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 yeah. crazy, one, crazy for me. One, Nihal, I said one, one point. One. It's a draw. I think it's going to be three because the, that's the way Tottenham play. But uh, okay, let's give it one. Sure. Um, then Arsenal versus Bournemouth, I'm giving it three. Three, three. Bourne- sure. Yeah. Bournemouth, yeah. yeah. If by then they won't have anything to play for too, and then yeah. second last game of the season, Old Trafford. <laughs> I'm gonna win four zero five zero whatever. I'm not even kidding. I'm also yeah. gonna go for three points for us. No uh, way. Unfortunately, I think I think it's it's a yeah. I mean, it depends. A lot depends on if we are ruled out of. All top five race, I think it's going to be zero. Do you I think know. you, the Eric Tanha, gives a fuck about like uh, <laughs> uh, what you're fighting for? Yeah, three points to Arsenal. 
I think FA Cup final will be somewhere close to. No, that is like after. afterwards. It'll be after end of the the end of May, right? Yeah. Mid- it. What do you say? Uh, one or zero for Arsenal. One or zero for Arsenal. I'm gonna give it three now because everyone said three. <laughs> everyone said three, no? Cool, bro, cool. Three. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Let, yeah. Let's keep three. Let's keep Dude, three. There's no uh, the only place that we were disagreed at was Chelsea. One there. I'll mm-hmm. give it. I'll give one there for us. Oh yeah. Just to change it. No. So how we, many points have you dropped? We also pegged uh, Spurs. Also, you're dropping points, no? Hmm. Yeah. So four yeah. points we'll drop. Chelsea yeah. and Spurs. Four yeah. points. City will drop. It's not going to make yeah. this smooth, bro. Uh, till now, it's till not now, going to be like this. Let's not going to be like. Let's, like this. <laughs> let's, do, Liverpool. Be like... <laughs> now, let's, let's do Liverpool. All right. Liverpool have hmm. Atlanta. Yeah. Eleven. Then they have Crystal Palace. Let's just give them three for Crystal Palace. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, then after Atlanta away in three days they have Fulham away. Three, mm. three. Then yeah, they have, have Everton struggled, away. We've struggled at Fulham last season. This season, so they, there are three away games in a row. Then they have Everton away. Then Everton Same drop away. points. Everton away is uh, yeah. Three. Come on, Sean Dyche, ugliest low three. block in the history of the world. Those in those three matches, Fulham away, Everton away, and West Ham. And West Ham away is early kick off at six. I am gonna say I am gonna say Fulham they're gonna win Everton they're gonna scrape by a win but West Ham they're gonna drop points. Yeah. Yeah. At two points yeah. dropped. Either one yeah. of those out fixtures. Of those three, yeah, yeah. Out, out of those three, three fixtures, yeah. at least drop one point drop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, two points drop once. We can yeah. we can say that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next is uh, Anfield Tottenham. <sighs> three points. Three points. He will spread open, bro. They'll fuck him. They'll just motherfuck him. Three points. Yeah, three, three points. points. Okay, I'll I I I think I'll give three points to them. Sid also. Then yeah. Aston Villa away, second last. I'm gonna give this one point. I think we'll win that match. I think we'll three win. points. Liverpool. I win. think season ending. Yeah. Aston Villa will have something to play for. For sure. Conference League. So, Anything, no conference league, no. no, no conference league is going to be four, like bro. Uh, second last game doesn't matter what because I think conference league final is uh, May twentieth or something later. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, semi finals will be a little before that, and it could be Europa League too, right, for Liverpool. So it's it's kind of the Europa League. The Spurs match is sandwiched between Europa League match semi finals. So I don't know. Uh, this match is sandwiched between, yeah, so it probably Aston Villa se pehle hi hoga. Uh, yeah. yeah, so Europa League, Spurs, Europa League, Aston Villa. All depends on, all I depends on. I actually think between these two games, I'll drop two more points, if you can say that. Because of the Europa League sandwich fixture. Yeah, between Spurs and uh, uh, Aston Villa. Yeah, yeah. Mm. kind of looks likely. So, I guess we are, uh, we are also everyone's couldn't... dropping four points, huh? <laughs> yeah. No, what is this? <laughs> We've <laughs> all decided. Arsenal yeah. Football Club. It looks like it, right? It it does. It's not okay. It's not gonna happen like this. It's not ever. gonna happen like this. No. <laughs> I, I think there is a special kind of hurt remaining for Liverpool this season, in the sense that in the last two seasons, uh two times we won, we lost the league by one point. Our home game was against Wolves. And that when we started the game, we were not winning the title. Like it was all in City's hands anyway. But I think this time it will be in Liverpool's hands, and then we'll fuck up something and against Wolves, and then lose it. That completes the circle for us. Uh, but I don't know, man. But bro, completing the circle is like you not feeling pain this time. Like why is this double pain? At that point of time, I'm numb anyway. Like I mean, I'll be just I'll be on you know I'll be on drugs, I guess. But whatever, yeah. This yeah. is a new yeah. Arsenal and fourth meme coming in, yeah. <laughs> Liverpool missing by one point. Uh, okay. Uh, before I let you guys go, let's take a final. We did the run in now. Let's take a final prediction of who's gonna win this league. Fresh predictions, April seventh. I keep doing this like every month so that like people can come to terms. I start with Avnav. City man. City. Yeah. All right. Cool. Said. Said. Looks like Arsenal. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's looking like it. It's just, yeah, dude, Arsenal, bro, just, Arteta, come on. I think we have. Uh, uh, we have no, the thing is, bias also. There's, just, also, there's yeah. just, I'm sorry, there's just this quote from Klopp 
Klopp on Man United versus Arsenal, the Klopp coming up. If Man United play like they did today, Arsenal will win that game. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's salty and everything, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's Klopp, the saltiest man Klopp on is the, the saltiest loser ever, bro. Like, it's true because you can't score these kind of goals against Arsenal. They're defensively fucking like tight. That like, is salty, but he's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah he will right. score, bro. Like, Kansa will like Saliba will not give that pass to Bruno. It'll never happen. That opening will never happen, and then like we'll suck in the whole game. That's why we all give three points in that game. I think we have to win. Both. Like objectively speaking, I think it's their season. I just hope they don't win CL or something, bro. It'd be ridiculous watching these these fucks jump with Premier League and CL in one season. Why can't I, why can't I, all of us just be happy, right? Like why can't Arsenal go on and win the CL? Why can't Europa, <laughs> Liverpool go and win Europa? And why can't How just give the Premier League to City? One second. How am I ha- happy in any situation here? Oh, well, I, I, will, I will jump in joy for that. I, I, need, I will take that any day yeah. of any week. Yeah, Arsenal, <laughs> CL, Liverpool, Europa League and Pep is Premier League, whatever. No, one goes, no one's going to be asked about Pep and their parade or whatever bullshit that is. But at least... I, I feel like Arteta's hands-on Premier League is in... Like is an, is going to in, inevitably happen if it doesn't happen. Yes, oil the hands, bro. Team <laughs> so good, like they're all like playing like they play. They can play in their sleep also. Like it's but today. Up. One thing is for sure: the title finally has now come back in Arsenal's hand. Yeah. Uh, you play seven games, you win seven games. It's over. It's over. That's it. And that is How the mentality. Is the... Keep, right. Hmm. I mean, the whole different. Oh, I'm sorry. Mine. Yeah, it's nine. Nine plus nine. And if we're winning all seven games, then at least it's plus more seven for us, right? Yeah. Minimum. So that's like plus sixteen. You have to you have to basically beat a couple of teams five nil. And from your fixtures, it is possible, but it I is don't possible. See but the thing is no, 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 Bas- there is win some games like two nil three in West Ham, you're not beating them more than two nil because it's away. Away I've never seen a team get demolished five nil, six nil. Uh and especially big teams like Fulham, Everton and West Ham, they're all decent ish. The game to actually make up is next week against Crystal Palace. You gotta like um, okay. you have and Aston Villa. And then Wolves. I think Wolves and Crystal Palace at Anfield is the only time you can actually score like more than four goals. Um it's not happening. It's not happening against Wolves. It's the final game of the season. So I think so. Basically, what you're saying is, if Liverpool were to kind of surmount the goal difference, we we should have the run Arsenal had in uh, late January, early February, like where you won five with final against Crystal Palace. You don't have, the, Palace. You don't have the fixtures for that. You exactly. You, you have two games. You need to be five nil in both games. That is next week against Crystal Palace and Field or Wolves last game of the season. So those if if Arsenal oh. don't fuck any team. Uh, then you, but I think goal difference is done. Goal difference, are, we have won. Because you, you guys will also win two, three, two nil, three nil. No, yeah, like it's not yeah, like yeah. two. So it's it's, it's it's hard. It's hard to make up plus nine goal differences seven, in seven games. Seven games. So ultimately, all we have to do is seven, seven. games. So seven much games. trauma for last season, bro. And we're back again at it. Oh my god. No, so much from last Butler's season. FC. This run-in is like the most like annoying Bro, thing. Bro, you in the can world. never count on Arsenal yeah. to finish the season yeah. strong so far. Mm. Which yeah. which of these seven games do you see like a filthiest of filthy low like filthy low block also? I feel like you guys have a way around it. Like it's just you no, not a filthy, see. not a Porto type of low block, but we don't. <laughs> see, uh the only team I think Aston Villa is gonna play expansive. They're gonna get uh, pumped. Wolves is not so strong. They can't put a low block, but I don't think so. Chelsea is going to play at the Crazy. Emirates. Pump. Tottenham don't have a plan B. Pump. Bournemouth also pump. Yeah, it's just United, bro. It's United. I'm <laughs> telling you. You'll drop <laughs> points there. <laughs> I think oh, no. that... It is Old Trafford, bro. <laughs> Theater First... of Dreams getting crushed. <laughs> No, dude, like that means that we're handing the title to Liverpool. Like, what the fuck? No, City like, will come win. On. Bro, City don't make win. United choose, bro. Please finish it off before that. No, for fuck's sake. I don't want to be in a position where yeah, I'm. Like... I don't want memes about that. Yeah. <laughs> we took points of City uh, at the uh, at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and Brighton away too. So let's not kid ourselves. They can easily get six points there. <laughs> 
uh, we were a little bit too harsh on city i think yeah yes uh, we were not city harsh on well. arsenal and liverpool a little bit too harsh on city so I mean, yes. you, with city we were just hoping with uh, with <laughs> arsenal and liverpool probably we just know city were like okay if we have to pick one maybe brighton and we were saying maybe spurs See, away or something but we have representatives but... from liverpool and arsenal in, in this panel right so automatically <laughs> there's some bias creeping into like the yeah. outcome if city win all seven games it's over bro <laughs> yeah and they get very good i will still stand by that i think whoever finishes above city will win the league city are going to be second there's bro, no way they're going to finish third The, the only problem i have with that is that we've binge watched the same season four times bro like it's not funny like watching city win the title is not like i mean think about it four into 52 Boring. weeks yeah for the same shit bro like watching them win again so so much analysis so much prediction and so much tears so much, and sweat so much so much so much for nothing 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 yeah we are no, all together i wanted a quick preds for the champions league ties if you guys are up yeah. for it Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Let me pull the ties up. Wait. Ties up, bro. I know the ties. <laughs> Arsenal, Arsenal, Bayern. Let's go, Sid. Arsenal, Bayern. You want to do both legs together or like full, single? Full, full. This week only. Uh, it's uh, it's at the Emirates. Bayern one nil. Hmm. <laughs> so much. Why? <laughs> you praised Arsenal this much to just give one zero. One zero. Ah. I think it'll be two one Arsenal. Two one Arsenal. That enough? On aggregate, Arsenal will win like four two or something. On wow. aggregate, yeah. Okay. I don't see Arsenal on... going through. Hmm. Dude, I see uh, a one. If if see you a one one. Yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. No, no. I was just saying that if you look at both the clubs right now, Arsenal and, and Bayern, Arsenal probably are at their peak of their club football in the last five six years. Bayern are at the most devastating state in the last five six years. If true, you can hard get past get past Bayern at this point of time, that trauma will be much worse than the yeah, five one cannot... five one trauma. So I, mean, I will... also feel in Champions League is a different beast. Yeah, and all these things don't matter. Like I also feel like Bayern have had a poor season, but they have everything to play for in the Champions League. Like they're not going to mm. win the Bundesliga. They're not winning any other trophy, right? So that mm. hunger is going to come back for Bayern you know, in in the league in the Champions League. So I feel that is yeah something. I else. think Milner, they have the experience also to play Milner, in like high pressure games. Yeah, I don't I don't see us conceding. I don't see us scoring. I think nil nil, and then Ali and Sarina. One nil Arsenal, filthy low block, just haram ball. One nil Arsenal in Allianz, yeah. bro. Yeah, <laughs> not happening. Not What are you saying? Happen. One nil, we're gonna win on aggregate. Haram bro. ball. What you are saying in one eighty minutes, Bayern will not score a single goal. Yes, <laughs> that is not happening, bro. <laughs> no way. And and neither which it's gonna be like four two or four three Arsenal on aggregate. Best defense, no, bro. It doesn't work like that. Best defense in the world, bro. Lock them down. <laughs> The priority one, number one tactical move will be just lock them down, and then if you score, you score. And think we're gonna score like a awkward goal, and Havertz gonna score it, hundred um, percent. All right, uh, Madrid, uh, Man City. Where is it? Where is the first fixture? Uh, Bernabeu. I think I think it's gonna be two nil Madrid. Yeah, nah, bro. It's gonna be one one. One one. I would say one one. Yeah, same. One one or. Maybe a sneaky Madrid win, one zero. But yeah, City is not going to win it at one above. Yeah, they're not getting pumped also. Why do you think City won it last season though at Bernabeu? I just, I just feel like City aren't uh, there yet, and I think Madrid are uh, with Bellingham. I don't know. I just feel good about Madrid. Nice. I think it's going to be. They'll win the UCL, bro. Madrid. Yeah, they, they'll be kings yes. of this fixture. We'll see what happens at the Etihad, but here that's what I'm saying. Uh, mm-hmm. Atletico Dortmund. Ooh, where is it? Again, Atletico. Uh, Atletico. I think it's going to be again. I think I feel like one. Do Dortmund are not good this season, so yeah, Dortmund's mm-hmm. been bad. I think it's going to be two nil Atletico. Yeah, yeah Atletico. I think one nil Atletico. I'm I'm going for Atletico win. Okay. Uh, PSG Barcelona. Uh, at uh, in Paris, <laughs> it's going to be two nil Barcelona. Tunnel Barcelona. Tunnel Barca in Paris. Hmm. 
कहीं पे भी एम्बापे पढ़ाना शो फॉर मड्रिड ब्रो टेलिंग यू आई एक्चुअली होप आई विश दैट एम्बापे गोज टू दाइनल दिस टाइम आई वॉन्ट टू गो टू दाइनल सो आई रूट फॉर पैरिस में